Most Linux Mint users start with Cinnamon, and for good reason. It's familiar, predictable, and gets out of the way. It feels like a traditional desktop, and that makes it comfortable, especially if you've been using computers for a long time. But at some point, curiosity kicks in. You hear about GNOME, you see how clean it looks, how focused it feels, how different the workflow is, and the idea starts forming quietly in the back of your mind. What if I tried GNOME? The problem is what comes next, fear of breaking a system that already works, fear of reinstalling everything, fear of losing files just to experiment with a desktop environment. In this video, we remove that fear completely. We're migrating Linux Mint from Cinnamon to GNOME step by step without reinstalling the operating system, without touching your personal data, and without turning your system into a gamble. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to do it safely and, just as importantly, whether GNOME is actually right for you. Before we do anything, let's clear up one important misunderstanding. Linux Mint is the operating system. Cinnamon and GNOME are desktop environments. They sit on top of the same system, they use the same applications, the same files, and the same core underneath. Switching desktops does not mean switching distros, it means changing how you interact with the same computer. That distinction matters. Now before installing anything, we slow down. This step isn't exciting, but it's the reason this process stays calm instead of stressful. First, we update the system completely. Not halfway, not later, fully. A fully updated system avoids strange issues that come from mismatched packages. Next, we create a time shift snapshot. Think of this as a rewind button. If you ever decide GNOME isn't for you, you can roll the system back exactly as it was. No guessing, no cleanup. Just restore and move on. Once that safety net is in place, we're ready. Now we install GNOME. We are not removing Cinnamon. We are not replacing anything. We are simply adding GNOME as another option on the same system. We install the GNOME session, the shell, and a few essential tools. Nothing bloated, nothing experimental, just a clean GNOME setup. This part may take a few minutes. Let it finish. Don't interrupt it. This is not a step to rush. Once the installation completes, we log out. At the login screen, you'll notice a session selector. This is where multiple desktops live peacefully together. We select GNOME, log in using the same user account as before, and enter the GNOME desktop for the first time. Now this moment matters. GNOME will feel different immediately. There's no traditional taskbar, no desktop icons by default. The workflow revolves around the activities overview instead of menus and panels. This is not because GNOME is missing features, it's because GNOME is intentionally designed this way. GNOME prioritizes focus, it reduces visual noise, it encourages keyboard-driven navigation and structured workflows. Some people love this instantly, Others need time. Both reactions are normal. At this stage, we do not customize everything. We simply confirm that things work. Your files are still there. Your application's still open. Sound works. Networking works. The system behaves normally. That's the reassurance moment. Now, once you're comfortable, we introduce GNOME's customization model. GNOME doesn't rely on endless settings panels. It relies on extensions. Extensions allow you to add features without turning the desktop into a mess. Things like docs, system indicators, and desktop icons are all optional layers. We install the extension manager and a small set of tools that make GNOME easier to adapt without breaking its design philosophy. This is where GNOME becomes personal. You can keep it minimal, you can make it more traditional, or you can land somewhere in between. There's no correct configuration only what works for you. Now let's talk about something important. You do not have to remove Cinnamon. Linux Mint fully supports running multiple desktop environments. You can switch between Cinnamon and GNOME at the login screen whenever you want. Some users prefer keeping both. 
Others want a cleaner system later. If and only if you're confident that GNOME is the desktop you want, you can remove Cinnamon safely. This is optional. There's no rush, no pressure. Removing Cinnamon does not uninstall Linux Mint. It simply removes one interface layer. And if you never remove it, that's perfectly fine too. Finally, we do a quick reality check. Files are still present, the software manager works, updates work, everything behaves like a stable Mint system should. And that brings us to the conclusion. Switching to GNOME does not require bravery, reinstallations, or blind trust. It requires understanding. You did not replace your system. You did not gamble with your data. You changed how you interact with the same machine. Whether you stay with GNOME, return to Cinnamon, or keep both, the important part is knowing that Linux gives you this freedom without punishment. Take your time. Explore slowly. That's how Linux is meant to be used.